captain's log. So far, no sign of intelligent life forms. Wow. That's awesome. Looks like we might be spending the night. What the hell? Just stay in the car! Um, I mean, no, I definitely set out to make a, um, uh, you know, I definitely set out to make a real horror movie. The kind of horror movies that I sort of grew up loving that really um, sort of did something very strongly to you. Um, I didn't want to make kind of like a self-referential kind of um, semi-comedy horror film where there are, the stakes are really low and never really go anywhere. So I sort of wanted to really, um, you know, go all the way. And if you are going to, you know, wander into the territory of making, you know, something kind of quite countercultural and socially taboo, why not just kind of really go there and imagine it as it really would happen as opposed to, um, you know, falling into a lot of the cliches that a lot of the recent horror films have done. What we sort of did in the film was, um, and over the many drafts of kind of writing the film to its final sort of stage, was um, looking at horror film structures and the cliches in horror films. And, I mean, there's a level at which the film is sort of the oldest horror film in the book. I mean... It's not exactly an original story. You know, a bunch of attractive young kids go out, to the, go out of their natural environment and kind of get menaced by a bad guy. I mean, it's kind of pretty much every slasher film plot in history. But I think the, um, when you add that very classical kind of known um, story with a very sort of realistic intent, it kind of takes on a different kind of life. Um, so on the one hand, it's very, very cliché. It, you know, it, it's as cliché as you can get at one level, but when you take that story seriously and um, don't take the fist out of it, it becomes something quite powerful. And obviously you focus on something different. You focus on reality and realism. And what would it really be like in that situation? And um, every time we got into like a movie moment uh, in the script or in the film, we'd say, well, how, how would someone really react? Really react? They wouldn't remember some say the thing they learned earlier in the film as you do often in most movies. You kind of like, um, you know, the, the people are kind of flawed and they fail and they ultimately do all fail. So it's much more like reporting a real-life crime than it is about making a movie structure. approach um, every character the same. Um, I give them a backstory and I, I go very thoroughly from when they were born to what their parents are like, how many brothers and sisters, if any, what school they went to, who their mates were, who their girlfriends were, um, what jobs they did, how we ended up in the situation we was in. In other words, just give them complete and utter history to what I call page zero. And then when I step on the page one, uh, on hopefully in the character's skin and off I go. So, I mean, it's pretty hard to, if you're on set, to, you know, have coffee and discuss, you know, Fellini's late, latest film and then say, we're ready for you, John, and then stand in front of the camera and turn into Mick Taylor, you know? It just doesn't work. So it's the first time I had to stay within the realms of that character, um, which didn't mean I was slashing anyone on set or anything. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it was a weird place to go to. And uh, when Greg mentioned at the other end that he was thinking, well, maybe we should do it again, uh, there was a big part of me that went, oh, my God, I don't think we'd do that again. Uh, uh, you know, a man's a real goose, eh? Hey? I mean, took four hours to get those fucking parts out of your car, right? Now the bass of everything's all burnt. What do you think of that? <laughs> hey? You know, you've got this idea and you want to do it and um, people might not respond to it. And, and finally, I think it's just a thing about trusting your instinct about what you believe will be powerful or emotional or interesting cinematically. So I guess that's the only thing that I would say is, is that, uh, you know, just uh, finally you have to trust your instinct as a writer and as a filmmaker and just... Because it's kind of all you've really got. At the end of the day, 
anyone can give you script notes, anyone can, you know, give some dumber comment about your project, but finally you have to be the one who believes in it more than everyone else. Because it's up to you to kind of, you know, see it through, even when people are kind of saying it's never going to happen, it's never going to work. It's your, it's your dream, so you've got to protect it as much as you can. A178, take one. Just upside down, mate. Inside. Yep. Downside. And clap it. Yeah.